in the last class we started discussion on design of arithmetic circuits. Uh, there we have discussed uh, the different type of design of adders and we started the design of multipliers also. Some of the multipliers we have seen. Now, uh, today we will continue the, the design of multipliers and other arithmetic circuits. In the last class, uh, we have uh, seen the array multiplier that were the multiplier and the multiplicand as if they are treated as two arrays and we have seen the partial products have been calculated and then the, the architecture is as if some of the arrays of half adders and full adders. So, here the structure we have seen that if it is a uh, 4 bit uh, multiplicand x is a x 3, x 2, x 1, x 0 and the multiplier y again is 4 bit y 3, y 2, y 1, y 0. Then last class we have seen that how the product z 0 is calculated as a set of half adders and full adders depending on the position of the uh, addition um, of bits. Say LSB is a when we are adding the two LSB bits, it is a half adder and then uh, for the uh, um, LSB multiplier bit, the MSB is also a half adder in that way we have calculated. Now, carry safe adder already we have discussed and the main concept was that carry bits are not immediately added, but set for the next adder stage. Now, using this carry save adder structure, some multiplier has been designed, where again that uh, the first array is a set of half adders and the second array third array and the fourth array is a set of half adders and full adders itself. So, this is a carry save using carry save adder structure. For the last array is actually the vector it is treated as a vector merging state. Now, if we consider the multiplier or the some regular layout of structure layout structure using the carry save adders, then we can this can be treated as if that this is a this is a carry save. So, as if inputs are coming here and there also and as if this z 0, z 1, z 2 and this output z 3 is also calculated. So, in this way this is a regular layout structure. Now, uh, we see the uh, performance of multiplier. So, performance of adder the triple carry adder we have seen that it is a actually uh, that n minus 1 into t carry plus t sum. So, actually this is the propagation delay and as the triple carry adder the carry is propagated. So, the main delay is for the carry itself and that has been avoided avoided using by using the the 
carry set or carry look ahead adder. So, now our approach is that when we are designing the multiplier using the half adder and the full adder circuit, then we want to use a carry set ahead adder in that full adder circuit. So, what will be the <coughs> performance of multiplier? Already we have seen a m by n array multiplier. So, if we remember that m by n array multiplier, this was the array multiplier, m was the multiplier, m number of bits are the multiplier and n is the number of multiplicands. So, in this case the c the main concept is here also the carry has been propagated from the first array to the next array, previous array to the next array. So, the multiplier performance is the delay is m minus 1 plus m minus 2 into t carry. So, mainly just like the ripple carry adder as if here this is the, the this delay part the first part of the delay is coming for the carry propagation. Now, the next term second term is for the n minus 1 into t sum. So, here the summation or the sum circuits that is the uh, sum adder circuits that is also coming here. And third term is for n minus 1 t n. So, this is for the and means the partial products because the partial products are nothing but the a b term a dot b. So, x 0 y 1 like that. So, here delay consists of three terms one is for carry propagation, one is for that addition, another is for that um, partial product. Now, when we use the multiplier or we implement a multiplier using carry set adder structure, then the delay becomes n minus 1 into t carry plus n minus 1 t and plus t merge. So, if we again see the structure of the, the vector merging. So, this is the uh, the first part is again for the carry propagation. The first part is n minus 1 into t carry is for the propagation carry propagation. Second term is for the partial product and as if the t merge is a the array of half adder and full adders of the last row that array of full adders and as if this is a vector merging steps. Now, we see a different type of uh, multiplier structure and that is being used uh, in recent times that is the state of the art technique is called the Wallace tree multiplier. Now, before I start uh, explaining the Wallace tree multiplier, first we see that how actually uh, what is the basic principle behind this multiplier. 
see as if these are the uh, the bit positions. So, again this is a uh, 4 bit multiplier. Now, if I remember, if we remember that a um, 4 bit multiplier our simple shift add, say I have um, I have x is x 3, x 2, x 1, x 0 and y is y 3, y 2, y 1, y 0. See, if we multiply this 2, if I want to multiply normally what we this is this is a term x 0, y 0, x 0, y 0 then this is x 1 y 0, then this is x 2 y 0, then it is x 3 y 0. Similarly, that then this will be y 1 x 0, so x 0 y 1, x 1 y 1 in that way it will come. So, I will getting a partial product for the each term and I have the this type of structure. So, if I represent this term as a dot, so actually each row consists of as if 4 partial products. So, see these dots or these bullets are nothing but some these bullets are some partial products. So, if it is a 4 by 4 multiplier, so this type of structure will get, see this is 4 again shift, again the partial products, again shift 4 partial products, again shift 4 partial products. Now, we have to add this thing. Now, the second step, so this is my first step, first step. Now, in the second step, see that how we add. Or see here, this is one, the first partial product will be as it is, it is kept. These two will be added, so I need a adder for this. Then this three, now if I add two at a time, then see this, this will be a this will be added and so this becomes a 3. So, here it is a if I consider this one, this is 1, then the 1th position this is 2, then this is 3 and this becomes now it is added and becomes 2. So, this becomes 3 again another one will come from here this becomes 3, this becomes 3 and this becomes 1. So, now if we again we see then actually it will be a it is nothing but a the first one is a partial product and again some additions are needed for this. So, this is a tree type of structure that is actually being used when the multiplier design is given using this basic concept. So, we see that thing again it is clear here these are the four partial products and the first stage these are the 0 8 to 6 bit positions and this is added. So, these two are added. Now, in the second stage, see that this is as it is, it is kept, this is 
as it is kept one partial product. These two are, this is a half adder because two, this is a full adder, this is a full adder, this is a full adder. So, when in the fourth step or the final step, this is kept as it is, this two becomes this, these two already added becomes one sum, so this becomes two, these two already added, this three is added giving one and one coming from here, so it, be, it becomes two, this three in similar fashion becomes two and this is sixth position it is two. So, in this way it will be added, this is the basic principle. Now, if we see the step by step procedure, so for the Wallace tree, the these are the partial products available. So, if it is x 3 x 3 x is a 4 bit, x is a 4 bit thing, x 3 x 2 x 1 x 0 and y is a y 3 y 2 y 1 y 0, then these are the partial products generated when it is multiplied. Now, in the first stage as we have seen, we need two half adders. So, this partial products x 0 y 0 is added as it is coming to z 0 and these half adders are one is x 0 y 3 and x 3 y 1 x 1 y 2. So, if we see that previous picture, so these bit positions is as it is, it is going here. These two as if this bit position is as it is, it propagates. These two we have to add and this is a half at the circuit in it, it goes here. Now, here it will be a full adder and it will come from uh, the second position after, after the second step. So, it will go here. Similarly, the third step will go here, fourth step come from here, fifth also come from here, sixth also it will be come from here. So, so if from there what we have seen that x 0 y 0 as it is come here. So, if it is a final adder circuitry and this is a partial product come here. Similarly, the x 0 y 1 and this is the this is the z 1 this comes here and the full adder circuit that four full adders. So, this is the second stage or first we consider the first stage, first stage. So, the when the partial products are available, we need actually two half adder. We need, we need here one half adder and this is another half adder in the third and fourth stage. So, this is the this is the two half adders in the third and fourth bit of the first stage. Now, if we consider the second stage, so second stage we what we see that one half adder 
and 3 full letters needed. So, if you see that which is 3 full letters, these 3 full letters are needed. Okay, this is one half adder and one, so this is again a one full adder. So, this is one again full adders are needed. So, for there are four full adders here, there are four full adders here, and the final adder that all these circuits that all the as if these are added. As it is only the first partial product is coming and these are all added. So, as if this is the this is the final adder of the Wallace tree circuit, this is the final adder and from there that z 0 to z 7 that uh, product terms are coming. So, uh, now the if we zoom the one stage, then this four stage why it is tree structure. See that in the second stage we need four full adders see the structure of the uh, full adder or what are the inputs, what it is adding. So, see here the it is coming y 0, y 1, y 2, these three as if these are the inputs, these are the these are the inputs of the full adder, one carry is generated and this sum is propagated to the um, to the next full adder. So, this is the carry, then this is y 3, similarly this 2 will be added and it is coming from the previous one. So, actually these are partial product, again the similar way it is doing. So, what we can do, we can now rearrange this, say this is one full adder y 0, y 1, y 2 is coming here. So, the first full adder, say if I now mark this is as a 1, then this is my 1 here. Now, y 3, y 4, y 5. So, y 3, y 4 and y 5 of the next one, the, these are the 3, these 3 are the inputs of one full adder and say the resultant the here that after summing these 2, this will be fed to the next full adder circuit and one coming from the previous stage the C i minus 1. And now this, so actually this becomes 2. this becomes 2 and and this becomes the the final one the c i minus 1 this is the it is coming. So, this structure this can be this can be treated as as if y 0 y 1 y 2 is fed to one full adder 
and y 3, y 4, y 5 this can be fed to another full adder circuit and what actually here sequentially it was adding in this way if we uh, draw the design of the full adders then what we can redesign that as if this one the number 1 is same, but as if 2, 3 and 4 this full adder circuit we are redesigning as if y 3, y 4, y 5 and they are adding into a full adder circuit. After all these are all a some, some circuit it is do doing the addition. So, first we are doing we, we are adding y 3, y 4, y 5 I am taking the result and then these two are adding to uh, by another full adder. So, this actually this full adder is doing the one input of um, f a 2, f a 3 and f a 4. So, this is actually the earlier circuit the 2, 3, 4 1 inputs of 2, 3, 4 and then the result is another it is taking a new one say another f a circuit and this is another f a circuit that will give the ultimate result. So, here see that depend uh, instead of doing the sequential thing as if here the partial products are fed parallelly. So, it will be a much much faster multiplier circuits because here you have to wait until the previous one comes, but here parallelly we are feeding y 0, y 1, y 2, y 3, y 4, y 5 these are nothing but the partial products available in the previous circuits. So, these are the things available. So, if we consider now the, um, the full tree say these are the partial products, these are my these are my partial products say x 3 y 3, x 3 y 2, x 2 y 2 like that. If we start from the LSB side, it will be as it is one partial product will come here and these are the two the addition of as if addition of 2 bits where 1 bit is actually 1 partial product. So, if I if I treat this as a p 0 p 1 then actually this is the sum of this thing this ring is that sum of this thing this ring. Similarly, the second one the another 2 partial products and one coming from the the another half adder and directly one partial product this will give another addition. Similarly, it is coming. So, in the first stage already we have seen that two half adders are needed. So, these are the two half adders which adding one is adding the partial product of x 2 y 2 and x 1 y 3 another is adding x 1 y 2 and x 0 y 3. One thing to be noticed that here when the suffix if I if I take the symmetrical thing that means x is x 3 x 2 x 1 x 0 y is y 3 y 2 y 1 y 0 then we will get the um, product terms as x 2 y 2 and say x subscript is reduced by 1 whereas y subscript is increased by 1. So, x 1 y 3 these two are added these two are as if the two input two product terms inputs as product terms to one of the half adder. Similarly, the other half adder say this is x 1 y 2. So, when the x subscript is reduced by 1 it becomes x 0 y subscript is increased by 1. So, it becomes y 3. So, it is x 0 y 3 and then these two are added. So, in the this is my this is my first stage.
Now, in the second stage we need three full adder, one half adder or sometimes we write the four adders, four full adders itself because one half adder always we can write as a full adder. So, this can be a three full adder, one half adder and then outputs are taken care. So, this is as if my final adder circuitry, this is my final adder and these are nothing but the a th these rings are the half adders. So, as if all these rings they are they are summing two inputs as if two operands it is working. So, these are the 3, 4, 5, 6 as if these are the half adders. So, always these are um, functioning on two inputs and this is my final stage. So, or this is my if it is it is just like a tree structure and this is the uh, root. So, this is called the now uh, wireless tree circuit. So, the basic principle is again if we summarize that basic principle is that as if product terms all product terms are available in the in one level in the top level one level this is one thing then in the first stage first stage two half adders two half adders are used in the second stage we can tell four full adders or three full adders plus one half adder are used and then in the last phase a set of half adders as the final adder. So, in this way we can design the circuit. So, this is and now there are many other multiplier circuit we have just uh, discussed uh, three type of multiplier circuit one our basic uh, um, and and shift one is our array multiplier uh, another is our carry multiplier using carry set adder stru uh, structure another is that wireless tree circuit or sometimes we call that using wireless tree adder that this is a wireless tree multiplier. Now, so there are several other multiplier circuits are available, but the basic principles are same always we try to reduce the uh, um, uh, digital elements or like the half adder full adders etcetera. Now, another type of or there are many other uh, arithmetic circuits are also used in different type of digital designs. So far, we have discussed, so we are discussing the arithmetic circuits. And the first one is the adder and all of we know that if the input variable is complemented that means, uh, if we use a b as the two operands and it gives the sum s and carry C, then obviously we can give the 
a bar b bar and it will do the complement of this one complement result is complement. Now, if one operand is kept as it is and one is complemented then obviously, we will get a subtractor circuit. So, actually the the adder circuit with a in inverted or complemented input that can be used as a subtractor. So, add a subtractor normally we use the same type of circuit. Now, another is the multiplier, multiplier we have used and we if we, we can do that thing for division circuits also, because one division always we can we can write like that, that the our dividend or dividend is divider into the quotient plus remainder. So, if I know the the multiplier and the adder circuit. So, we can divide that thing also that means, we can always we can get the quotient from here. Now, there are many other arithmetic circuits one is the comparator the other arithmetic circuits. So, this is one is shifter. another is comparator. So, first we see the shifter circuits. See this is a binary shifter and in this circuit actually we have used some pass transistors uh, pass transistor circuit. So, um, uh, before we st start explaining the shifter, so briefly I am telling the function of a transistor, this type of pass transistor circuit. See, normally there are two type of transistor we know, this is a n type and a p type transistor these we are calling the CMOS transistors, these are CMOS. Now, n type, so see this is there is one source drain and there is one gate. Now, if some this is a attached to it power supply. So, in the gate if we apply a 1 in the gate if it is 1 then the transistor is on that means, it will passing the current from source to drain if it is 0 that means, if the get if the get is in the get we give a 0 then actually it is off transistor is now similar thing 
for the p type normally the notation is like that and here it is totally reverse that means if the gate is 0 if a 0 is applied to the gate then then it will be on and if gate is 1 then it is off. So, using this concept we can and normally these n transistors are called the pass transistors because if it is 1 it will pass the current. So, this is the concept. Now, if we take a 2 bit shifter say this is a i and a i minus 1. Now, we see that what type of structure it is. See the shifter can be either a right shift or a left shift. So, first we see the right shift. So, this a i this a i so and this is a i minus 1 that means this is L S D this is M S D. So, if it is a right shift that means see for these two transistors see these are the this is transistor 1 and 2 the at the gate a right is selected means 1 so it will pass the value now see the this is this value is ai and this is passed to as a ai is passed as a b i minus 1 as it is a right shift now this is a i minus 1 a i minus 1 and that is going here and as as the left is 0 so it will not pass here similarly see when the left is 0 so this is also off and this will not pass from here so it will not pass from here so it will go here that means a i is b i minus 1 so this is a right shift because the msb becomes the one lesser bits bit positions that means f5 if i equal to 5 a5 becomes b4 so this is a right shift now we see the left shift. So, if it is a left shift now in this situation say f 5 say if it is a now left shift. So, the then this left bit is becomes 1. So, this left bit becomes 1. Now, see if this line is 1 that means this transistor is on as well as this transistor is on. Now, if this transistor is on then actually a i minus 1 means the lowest bit or the L S D side that is being passed as the b i that means a i minus 1 goes to b i. So, this is a left shift and when this is on see here this should this bit actually the a i minus 2 this can be a i minus 2 it goes to b i minus 1 like that. So, that means a i minus 1 goes to b i 
a i minus 2 goes to b i minus 1. So, this is a if i, I is 5 again then this is actually a 4 is going to be 5 that means, this is a left shift. So, using this simple circuitry that and taking that which uh, or, or selecting the control lines that actually wh whether we want a right shift or a left shift or no operation later we will see this situation. So, it can be accordingly shifted right or left. Now, if it is no operation say again for no operation that another two transistors are left. So, if it is no operation then actually all this thing will go and here no op is a this line is the one. Obviously, these two transistors are on and see as it is A i will passed as B i and A i minus 1 will passed as B i minus 1. So, this is a no operation that means, no shift is needed. So, this is for a shifter of bit splice i, this is a shifter. Now, we will consider a more complex shifter. So, this is normally called a barrel shifter. See actually here it is a multiple bits are shifted together or what we can tell as if it is a um, the multi bit structure and together it is shifting. So, earlier example what we have seen that only one bit is shifted that means, if it is left the LSB is shifted to MSB, if it is right shift then MSB is shifted to LSB. Now, for the barrel shifter say I have a I want to give a shift of uh, a 4 bit value, one, one 4 bit value I want to give a shift. Say I have a n bit bus and I want that the whole n bit bus should be shifted by some of the bits. Then you will see that how the structure will be. Okay. Sometimes these shifters are called the VLSI shifter because this 4 can be 4 bit or 8 bit shifter or 16 bit shifter okay. and it has a very regular structure we will be seeing that. See, first thing we see the the design architecture. So, I want the bits 4 bits to be shifted are a 3, a 2, a 1, a 0 these 4 bits. Okay. Now, if I want a shift 1 then say as actually it has the it has a 2 D type of structure and here there are 4 input bits that to be shifted and there are 4 options that how many shifts we want. It is a shift 0, this is a shift 1, this is a shift 2 and this is a shift 3 and see the structure it is being there. So, this is a say if we start seeing from here, say this is a shift 0. So, this transistor is for shift 0, again diagonally this is for shift 0, again it is connected to this is shift 0 and this is shift 1, shift 0. Now, if it is shift 1, I give you a different color that then this is a shift 1, this is a this diagonal is for is for shift 1. Similarly, this circuit is for shift 2 and this circuit is for is for shift 3. Similarly, if we see actually here also, so it is diagonally symmetrical or across the diagonal it is symmetrical. So, if we consider this shifter 
as if this is a 2D arrays of pass transistors, then each diagonal represents a shift, a particular shift. Say here the main diagonal is the shift 0 and the off diagonal or that means the next diagonal is a shift 1 represents, then another diagonal is it is a shift 2 and the last one is a shift 3. So, similarly here also we can do that thing. Now, say I have 4 bits, this is, this is my data bits to be shifted. So, these are my A3, the my data bits are, my data bits are, data bits are A3, A2, A1, A0. Now, see how the shift can be there. So, see that this is my A0 line, the LSB. See, this is my LSB line and when the shift 0 is selected, so this, see this is my A0. So, this is this is nothing but a pass transistor just now we have mentioned. So, this is being passed. So, this A0 value, this is this, this A0 value is passed and this is going to the, because it is a shift 0. So, at a time only in the last row only this value will be selected. So, this is going to the B0. So, A0 goes to B0. Similarly, say if it is A1 and see that actually for A1 this value will be this this is the shift 0 because this diagonal represents the shift 0. So, A1 will be as it is it will be a B1. So, as it is a shift 0 means no shift. So, A3, A2, A1, A0 will move from as it will as it is will be shifted to output. Now, we see the say we, we see the shift 1. So, if it is a shift 1 say our the next diagonal this is a shift 1. Now, say A0, A0 has come here say 0. So, shift, shift 1 is selected. So, now this will be passed to Uh, um, here uh, it will be uh, see okay uh, this is um, this is shift one and this value is this value is a 1. Sorry. So, this is a 1. See this is a 1. Here it is a 1 is here see, attached. So, now it will be clear. So, if I if I select the shift 1 that means this is my this is my a 1 value this is my a 1 value this is my a 1 value this comes here and it will be shifted this will go to b 0. Similarly, a 2 see shift 1. So, for when a 2 this will be this is my a 2 and see this is my shift 1. So, this transistor is selected this transistor is selected it will go to b 1. Similarly, if it is a 3 see that this a 3 is a 1 will be going to be 0, a 2 will be going to be 3, a 3 will go will go to b 2, this is my shift b 2. And what about the um, uh, 
a 0, where the a 0 will go. As it is a shift 1, see this is shift 1. So, this is my this is my shift 1 and it will go. So, actually it will be 1 bit shifted, a 3 will go to b 2, a 2 will go to b 1, a, a 1 will go to b 0. So, this is the if when the shift 1 is selected. Now, if we consider the if we consider the shift 2 if we consider the shift 2, then we will be seeing that accordingly the 2 bits will be shifted. That means, a 3 will be go to a 1. So, this 2 will be my shift 2. In this way, the a number of bits or in this example, it is a 4 bit input will be shifted accordingly. So, these are the different arithmetic circuits we have. Uh, seen already we have discussed the comparator circuits. So, uh, we can end uh, here we uh, end our lecture on arithmetic circuits and these are the quizzes for the uh, lecture 29 and 30. the design of arithmetic circuits mainly are uh, there we have uh, studied the design of adder the different type of adders the multipliers the first multipliers etc now today we'll see another uh, very important uh, design structure that is called the memory and that is one of the important uh, um, circuits that we need for any digital uh, systems. Today we will read the design of memory circuits. Now, as already we have read the um, read only memory, now today we will see that a random access memory or the uh, RAM. So, first we define what do we mean by the random access memories or RAM. Normally, uh, it access regardless of the locations of the cells unlike tapes or magnetic disks. Now, storage in RAM based on either positive feedback or capacitive charge, capacitive charge. But before these the different types of memories, we see that, that uh, what is the uh, normal structure of that uh, memory. 